organization possible, but a special thanks to Tony for uh, arranging this today and uh, to Chris uh, for all your work. I greatly appreciate it. It means, uh, it means a great deal to me. I don't want to get in the name game and do that inevitable piece where I forget someone. I'll just say I have an awful lot of friends in the room uh, and I'm very appreciative for that. Please know how much that means to me, each and every one of you. Uh, I will cite two uh, by name uh, beyond uh, uh, Tony who's been so helpful, uh, Chris, and that's just... Uh, Former District City Council Paul Scapiccio, he supported me in my first run for City Council, and everybody said when I ran, uh, there's no way he can win. Paul backed me, everyone else turned, to, turned out to be right. Uh, I did not win, uh, but uh, you never forget the people who were with you in your first race. Came back, supported me in my second race when I won, and uh, was right there with me from day one, running for mayor, and I, I am so grateful to have uh, such a great uh, public servant. Uh, and Paul's to pick you up behind me. So, Paul, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> we also learned during the course of this campaign, the secret is not to say that Paul is with you, but to say that Paul's mom is with you. And that is, uh, the votes follow them. Uh, second is State Rep. Uh, Carlo Basil, who I know is here. And, uh, a great friend of mine. I know not from North End, but over in East Boston. But uh, to have Carlo Basil in my corner means the world to me. Uh, one, we go over to East Boston and he simply says, this is the guy we're voting for, and people say, okay. Uh, I wish I could campaign like that in every day, but, uh, but more than that, the reason why is this guy gives his heart and his soul to the people of uh, East Boston and the people he represents. He cares so deeply uh, about everyone in his district and in this city. I think about his work for veterans in particular. Uh, Carlo just gives and gives and gives. That's the kind of guy he is. So Carlo, uh, So I, uh, 
I greatly appreciate this opportunity. The world has sort of turned upside down for me over the past week since I made the final. And uh, I'm so honored to have this chance. I don't take anything for granted. I'm working morning, noon, uh, and night. Um, but uh, it's, it is uh, a different experience um, when you uh, wake up and uh, your five-year-old and four-year-old are there. Uh, and they ask you, what does a mayor do? Uh, and I don't quite know how to answer that, to be honest, with the five-year-old and a four-year-old asking, but then asking if they can run for mayor too, uh, and, uh, and uh, asking me uh, sort of what this all means as this swirls about. And uh, I just try to stay focused that, you know, when we think about this, it can't just be about who the next mayor is. It's about Boston working together. That's really what it is. Um, and I heard a lot of the pieces during the campaign. I know I'm going to continue to hear it during the campaign. Conley, I like him, but all he does is talk about schools. Uh, and I get that. I hear that criticism a lot. I want to tell you, I talk about a lot more than schools, and I'll do that uh, briefly. But what the piece of my campaign has tried to be about this whole time is that Boston stands tallest when we stand together uh, and when everybody works together. Uh, and I know here in the North End, what makes the North End work is when the business community and the residents are working together. And it may not always be easy, but as long as people are talking to each other and working together, we're always going to be able to do the best things in this city and in our neighborhoods. And I think that's what our future has to be about. But we also have to recognize that we're facing challenges when we look into the future. Mayor Menino has done a great job. He's given his heart and his soul to this city. We are a better city for 20 years of Tom Menino's uh, time in office. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't mean that we don't have challenges confronting us as we move to the future. If I boil it all down to one piece, I think it's this. We have a daunting equity gap in this city. We are increasingly a city of the very rich and the very poor, and we are making it harder and harder to have a strong middle that can bind us together in this city. And I think that's the challenge for the next mayor. How do we bring this city together and bind it together so that everyone in this city can remain in this city and people can come to this city and make a home here wherever they are on that ladder? And that's really got to be the challenge because without a strong middle, it's impossible for our most vulnerable residents to find pathways and opportunities to succeed and ultimately undermines the future of this city. So I look at it with a few pieces, and I start at one place, and I think it's vital. And it goes right to the Chamber of Commerce and our business community as a whole in Boston. Jobs make a huge difference in people's lives. Great jobs change lives. Great job can take a family that's on the margins, that's battling with any number of challenges, and a great job can stabilize that family and keep it together. Great job can take an individual with no opportunities, but suddenly you get that job and that opportunity, and it opens up all sorts of other doors for you. And so we have got to make sure in Boston that we keep creating jobs. So what I want to see us do is continue to support the institutions in this city and those unique pieces of our economic engine, our hospitals, our laboratories, our colleges, our universities, all of which give us a competitive advantage over the rest of the world, but I want to see us embrace a regional approach to this. Because I think about bringing Vertex over to the seaport, that big biotech company. We're all in the city hall giving each other high fives about doing that. But I don't think we stopped to think that we were taking a company from Cambridge to Boston and calling that a victory. We're not competing with Cambridge. We're competing with the rest of the world. We're competing with the West Coast. We're competing with China. We're competing with India. That's who we're competing with for jobs. So the next mayor has got to make sure that we're working on a regional economic development plan. How are we going to work together with Cambridge, with Somerville, with Waltham, with Watertown to say, how are we going to create jobs in the future? How are we going to nurture innovation? How are we going to compete? How are we going to make sure that we become the global leader in clean technology? How are we going to be the global leader in advanced manufacturing? How are we going to be the global leader in education technology? And that we have a regional plan to strengthen that economic engine. But there's a key piece behind that. We can't just focus strictly on the innovation and technology economy. We've got to recognize that jobs are created in new businesses and small businesses. And there are just as many jobs created on our main streets and neighborhood business districts as there are in the downtown. And so what we've got to do better, I think, is connect our main street business districts with 
our innovation economy, and our downtown business districts. I'd like to see us create a Made in Boston Venture Capital Fund where we ask banks to pool resources and lend at lower rates to small businesses to help them grow on Main Street. I'd like to make sure that we create a Buy Boston program that's going to connect the businesses on Hanover Street and Dorchester Avenue to the large institutions. So that when a college or a university is going to buy their flowers, they're going to buy them from a local florist. And when they're going to cater their events, they're going to work with local caterers. I want to see us connect and weave together our business communities so that we are working together to strengthen and create more great jobs for the people of Boston. But I think there's a second piece that goes beyond that. And that is that City Hall has got to work for the residents of this city. You shouldn't have to wait eight months to get an occupancy certificate. You ought to be able to walk into City Hall and feel like you're in the Apple store. I want someone flying at you with an iPad, and I want the only thing they're going to say to you to be, how can I help you today? We have got to transform City Hall to be customer friendly and user friendly. I think we can do it. I don't think it will be easy. But I know we've got a lot of great city workers. And if we put the emphasis on professional development and customer service, we can transform that. If we make everything accessible online, all of those services online, and if we look at other cities and how they do it, that we can become a better partner for both residents and businesses. Because it's eight months wait for an occupancy certificate for that small business, but it's also a ridiculous wait for a homeowner trying to get permission to do renovations on their home. We need to make this a city government that's thinking about the people of the city before we are actually thinking about the city government itself. The other piece that we have to connect on economic development and job creation and a city all that works is housing. We don't think enough about the connection, but it's vital. People need a place to live. So I start with the fact that City Hall, again, has got to make sure we're working for the people of Boston. I'm proud that I was one of only four city councilors to oppose the rental inspection ordinance. I didn't see that as anything other than more bureaucracy and more trouble that wasn't really going to achieve the result that was intended. And so I cast that vote against it, and I think it was a mistake that we passed that. I'll certainly work as mayor to take a tough look uh, at how we can correct that wrong. But it's more than that piece when we think about housing. What we've done well in Boston is we've done pretty well with affordable housing. There's always more to do, but Mayor Menino's come up with some great models. I want to make sure we sustain our commitment to affordable housing. But the other piece we've done well is we've never struggled to build a luxury condominium in Boston. And there's nothing wrong with that. They bring value. But our problem is we have no housing plan for the middle. And so if you're a young artist or a young professional or an empty nester, or you're a senior on a fixed income, we can't get you from rental to home ownership anymore in this city. We can't get you from one bedroom to three. And ultimately, we pay a big price on that because we price out the talent that helps to drive our economic engine. But more than anything, if we price you out and you land in a suburb, Maybe you stay and keep your job in the economic engine, but we've lost someone who would have invested in our neighborhoods for a lifetime. More often than not, though, we're pricing you right out of the region. So you've come here for uh, school, we've educated you, but then you can't afford to stay, so you leave and you actually become the driver for another region who's going to ultimately try and take jobs from Boston. So if we want to stay competitive, we have got to build middle market housing. And what I will make sure happens if I'm elected mayor, I will make sure the BRA has a real plan where we get real community input, we bring transparency to the BRA, and we put at the center of that plan the notion of cooperating with our regional partners on growing jobs, but also the notion that we need a plan to address middle market housing. And that starts at $1 above affordable and moves right into the heart of the middle class. But if we cannot create housing for the middle market in Boston, we will undermine our future. One other piece directly connected to why jobs matter, they also create safe and healthy neighborhoods. And I won't go into uh, my crazy long speech on that, but I would just say this, we need a comprehensive plan to make sure every street and neighborhood in this city is healthy. If you live in one of three neighborhoods in Boston right now, it's where almost 80% of our violent crime takes place. But more than that, there is no neighborhood that's immune to the issues around safety and health. Everyone knows the scourge of addiction in one way, shape, or form in our neighborhoods. 
And we need to recognize that connection between issues like mental health, addiction, and trauma, and how they can destabilize individuals and families and ultimately take a toll on our streets and our business districts and the ability of people to feel safe in their own neighborhoods. I want to rededicate ourselves to a comprehensive plan around how we address this. I don't have all the answers on it, but I just say this. We should never be in the city that has more health resources than any other city on this planet and have a situation where a loved one is ready to be in recovery but can't get a bed in a facility. And we should never be in a situation where you have to know a politician to get a bed in a facility. We need to do better for everyone who's in crisis in this city, but recognize ultimately it helps us create safer and healthier neighborhoods. Now how about that? I've gone this whole way without mentioning schools. <laughs> I do that every time I speak. I'll just say this briefly on schools though. They're vital to the future of this city. Whether you have children or not, you need the Boston Public Schools to work. The quality of life in our neighborhoods is directly indexed to the quality of life in our city and the quality of our schools. If we have great schools, we will have great neighborhoods. And if we don't, we will put a low ceiling on our future. No neighborhood knows this better than the North End. The transformational power of the Elliott School and the amazing job it has done to help bind family, families here for the long term that would have moved out previously. The need to grow the seats here because it's in such demand. Quality school changes a neighborhood for everyone and for the better. How do we do it? We gotta take a billion dollar bureaucracy in the central school department and we need to cut it deeply and take those resources and put them at the school site level, build schools from the bottom up and not the top down. We need to reform our teacher's contract. I'm the only elected official in the city who's been willing to take that battle on. And it's not because I don't think teachers deserve to be well paid. They do. I'm a former teacher. I've taught children from every neighborhood in this city. Teaching is one of the hardest jobs there is. I think it's sacred. I think it's a job where every teacher should feel deeply respected and supported and well paid. I don't have an issue with teachers. I have an issue with having a teacher's contract that gives our children one of the shortest school days in urban America. And the net result there means our children in Boston Public Schools do not get art, music, physical education, or science on a regular basis, once or twice a week for half a year in many Boston Public Schools. That's what we're trying to change. We want to support great teaching. We want to make sure every school has a great principal. But we need a length of school day that is going to allow our children to get a whole education. And that's what I'm aiming to do. So I hope that you will consider me in November and consider spreading the word. But I think at the end of the day, this all connects together. If we want to have safe and healthy neighborhoods, then we need to create better jobs. If we want to have better jobs, we're going to need to have better schools. And if we want to have better schools, that's going to lead to safer and healthy neighborhoods. That's what it's all about, is this connection. And we can only get there if we're working together. And if we live in a city where my children are your children, and your children are my children. And that's my vision for the future of this city. So I thank you for the time today. I greatly appreciate it. I thank each and every one of you for what you do to make the North End and Boston a great place to live. Whether it's a resident here who helps work on the quality of life day in, day out, or whether it's the business community here that helps to employ people and make this a great destination for the entire world to come to, I thank you for what you do. And it's great to hear about events like the cleanup last week uh, that was so successful and where residents uh, of this neighborhood uh, and members of the business community work together to make the North End a better place to live. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it.
for the operation cleanup from, from last week. It was a huge success. I have never been more proud of this neighborhood and give yourself a round of applause because Good afternoon. First, thank you. I'm going to call John Connell. He's an unbelievable speaker, and I always enjoy listening to him on the council. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, thank the Chamber of Commerce uh, for organizing that cleanup last weekend. Uh, I came by here and to see residents and businesses and Suffolk University students for the first time to come down this neighborhood and to participate in the cleanup, I thought it was very, very good. And I want to thank Tony for organizing that. Tony, thank you very much. <laughs> and, um, I think we learned a lesson uh, from that cleanup, particularly with Suffolk University, where um, uh, a lot of their students live in our neighborhood. And we do have, uh, they work with us. They hire police officers the detailed police officers on uh, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But I really think that it's an opportunity now for us to really uh, work with those students who actually live in this neighborhood so they understand some of the issues that the residents are facing, uh, particularly with uh, loud parties and uh, the noise issues at nighttime, part of life issues. So I'm really excited that uh, we started that in a So Tony, thank you. And I do have a um, citation um, for myself to Tony. So Tony, if you come up here, it's an official resolution um, be resolved that the Boston City Council extends its congratulations to Tony Gelardi in recognition of organizing the Northend Operation Cleanup Day and be a further resolve that the Boston City Council extends its best wishes for continued success that this resolution be duly signed by the President of the City Council and attested to in a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the City of Boston and is signed by President Murphy and myself. And Tony, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Issues? 
Nothing? I mean, this neighborhood's perfect. There you go. And I thank you for your help too. My pleasure. But it's, it's one day, and you're going to do it another day. But it needs to be on a daily basis. And I hope this is going to be an impetus for everyone who did clean up that they'll do it on a daily basis. That you don't have to have an organized event to keep your sidewalks clean, to put your trash out in front of the time. And we have our weekend crew on Saturdays and Sunday mornings. But as soon as uh, Monday morning arrives, you know, the streets are clear again. So if everybody does their part, 